Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Fleece again from Central New Mexico Community College. We're, we'll continue our discussion on the blood in a series of seven videos. This is video D, where I focus first on the platelets and then just a few blood disorders. So a pretty short video. The platelets are the third formed element and the last formed element to discuss, and recall that often in animals we prefer to call platelets thrombocytes. On occasion, we might hear people refer to platelets as thrombocytes in humans. In humans, platelets arise from a big cell called a megakaryocyte, which literally falls apart into little pieces called the platelets. And this mega karyocyte, remember this literally means big, mega, karyo means nucleus, think of prokaryote and eukaryote, and then site of course means cell. Um, this big mega karyocyte falls into little pieces of about four micrometers. So this is the size of the platelets, approximately. Those sizes can really vary. I've seen slides with rather big platelets. Platelets do not tend to live all that long because they, after about 9 or 12 days, get removed and phagocytized by um, macrophages in the spleen and in the, the liver. Now when we look at the numbers of platelets per cubic millimeter of blood, we express them in the hundred thousands. Recall that red blood cells we expressed in millions, white blood cells we expressed in thousands. Platelets, on the other hand, we express in hundred thousands. That's kind of an easy way for you to remember these different um, numbers. Or you can argue that platelets occur at about a quarter of a million to a half a million per cubic millimeter of blood. They play an huge role in clotting, as we'll see in the next uh, video. And in that role, they release all kinds of little, um, they release all kinds of chemicals from these little granules that we find inside of them. These platelets, by the way, aside from these vesicles with granules inside of them, also contain some organelles, interestingly enough. We're going to learn about all the different chemicals they release when we learn about the clotting process. But platelets can also easily change their, their size and shape as they begin the process of the stopping of the flow of blood. And so just like muscle cells, they contain actin and myosin to allow contraction to occur and change shape that way. Finally, the way that platelets are formed in the red bone marrow as part of hematopoiesis is the process called thrombocytopoiesis. While erythropoietin regulated the um, erythropoiesis process, we see here that thrombopoietin, also secreted by the kidneys and liver, regulates thrombocytopoiesis. The hormones that regulate it Leukocytosis are mostly produced by the white blood cells themselves, by the way. So again, this all occurs in the red bone marrow, with the precursor cell to the platelets being the megakaryocyte, the precursor to that, the megakaryoblast, and they share a myeloid stem cell with all of the other white blood cells and the red blood cells, except for the lymphocytes. Here and there, throughout our discussions of red blood cells and white blood cells, I've already mentioned some disorders, but let's really specify some of the most important red blood cell disorders. Clearly, there's something called anemia, which, if you translate that, means literally without blood. But really what we're referring to is a low level of red blood cells, and often that can be due to the fact that not enough red blood cells are formed or not enough hemoglobin is formed. And this can all be due to uh, an improper diet, improper absorption of vitamins and iron, perhaps too much bleeding to where we lose our red blood cells, perhaps internal bleeding that's not been discovered, 
or for some reason um, a person is undergoing excessive red blood cell destruction which can occur um, especially if we if a, a, your patient is on chemotherapy but it could also be due to some kind of diseases polycythemia is just the opposite if you listen to the word poly poly means many cells in the blood literally means too many red blood cells and this can be due again to a form of um, cancer or even more so we sometimes all suffer from polycythemia when we do not remain hydrated so under severe dehydration the proportion of red blood cells to uh, compare to white blood cells platelets in the plasma is such that we suffer from polycythemia which can really thicken our blood and make it too viscous and sluggish and of course many athletes um, introduce or induce a polycythemia artificially by means of blood doping which I've discussed in slides that related to red red blood cells when I discussed the white blood cells I talked about neutrophilia and eosinophilia etc those are forms of um, leukocytosis where we have too many white blood cells but of course in the case of neutrophilia it means one particular white blood cells the neutrophils um, but leukocytosis is a, a more general term leukopenia on the other hand is just the opposite penia always refers to poor you may have heard of people suffering from osteopenia which is typically what starts to happen before a person suffers from full-blown osteoporosis lymphoma on the other hand is a form of um, cancer where um, many malignant lymphocytes are now accumulating in some of the uh, lymph nodes the spleen the liver thrombocytopenia since you know what penia means now means too few uh, platelets which can again occur due to excessive bleeding or it could be due to some kinds of chemicals such as again chemotherapy um, other medications can introduce thrombocytopenia this then is the end of our discussion of all of the formed elements